Welcome to day 586 of our Web3 journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They're an investor in DeSoFi. Happy birthday, Brian. Today's your birthday. Yeah. Uh, happy birthday, Eddie. Uh, you are 41 and I'm 35. That's not true. Yeah, we're an annual, annual twins. So you were born six years before I was. But everybody can see that you're obviously older than me, or at least you look older than me. Let, let's have a poll. We apply to this comment and say who looks older. You got to keep in mind I have a light shining on me, and Brian has natural light. So, so <clears throat> let's talk about Elon Musk. Elon is going to charge eight dollars a month in order to verify users on Twitter. Wait a minute. Yesterday was twenty dollars a month. It so, appears that after some discussion with Stephen King on Twitter, he's lowered it to $8, but he's going to lower it to $8 a month. So $96 a year. And those who get verified through this process will also have their posts and posts appear higher in search. Uh, when they reply to people, their posts will be higher. So you're basically paying to boost your post. Now, I'm not sure exactly what to think about this. Uh, on one hand, I think it definitely is going to help eliminate bots, spam, hate speech of all kinds, uh, which is great. And I'm a big proponent of that. Uh, but on the other hand, it's basically boosting speech of those who can afford to have their speech boosted. Uh, I'm fine with Twitter charging people. Uh, I'm even okay with them boosting posts of those who pay the $96 a year. I mean, after all, they're a private company, they can do what they want. But, and, and I don't really think it's any different than selling ads really, you're just selling ads to everybody. So anybody that wants to pay the $8, they get their post boosted. But what I'm not really fine with uh, is that Twitter and Elon Musk, they, they, Twitter, I mean, Musk bought Twitter claiming that he's all about free speech and how he wants to protect free speech. And, and that, he, that, that he doesn't think that they were fair to some people, conservatives name, which, which I agree with in, in, in some cases. Uh, but I think Twitter is becoming a gatekeeper of whose speech is boosted and whose speech basically is covered up based on their potential to pay this fee. Uh, like, I, I think they just need to admit that it's not really free speech, it's, it's paid speech. You're paying to have your speech amplified. Uh, and I, there are plenty of people in the United States alone who can't afford $100 a year to get their voice heard on Twitter. I, I mean, I, I don't think it's a very democratic process. I think a lot of people complained when Twitter was not being fair to conservatives, which, like I said, I agree in some cases that they probably weren't fair to cons some conservatives. But this is not being fair to those who can't afford $100 a year. And so I don't really see any difference. Both are undemocratic. If you're if you're blocking if you're blocking conservative voices because you don't agree with them, or you're blocking people who can't afford hundred dollar a year because they're not paying you, I don't really see any difference. I, it's not I don't really know. I, I have a different take on this. I think so. These people aren't being blocked out, right? They're just not being amplified. amplified. The people who pay are being amplified. The people who don't pay their posts will still be out there. They still have the ability to have free speech. They just don't have the ability to have the amplified free speech unless they pay to amplify it. Is this really any different than, let's say, a town square where people are talking, chatting, you know, talking about some, some stuff. Some people have megaphones. But if you really want to have that big billboard up, up on the wall, of that huge building in the background of the town square, you got to pay to do that, right? So I don't know if I agree that this is paid free speech. I think it's still free speech, but you do got to pay to amplify. And I, and I personally think there's going to be more good that comes out of this than bad because I think it's going to help weed out some of the some of the spammers, some of the bots, some of the people who have multiple accounts just to kind of boost themselves some of the hate speech people you know if you pay that eight dollars you're also gonna have to verify that you are a real person and everybody can see who that real person is 
So are you going to be as likely to take that hood off and, you know, spew your hate? Probably not. You're probably not going to do that if you're paying that $8. So more, much of that hate speech is going to be pushed down to the bottom with those who don't pay. No, I, I understand that. I, I just feel that there's all this, all this negativity around Twitter because they were maybe shadow banning certain people, which is basically, basically this is what's going to happen. People that don't pay are going to sort of be shadow banned. Their, their posts are going to be pushed to the bottom. To a lesser degree, so, I think. So, so, so think about if you're walking down the street, uh, a public street, and somebody says, you can only whisper unless you have enough money to talk loud. Now, I think that would be that would be more along the lines of what this is doing. The people that the middle class in America, the, the wealthy in America, they can get all their content, their posts amplified, their what they their speech amplified. The people that don't have money are going to kind of be pushed to the wayside. And, and that that's kind of what I don't like. I, I'm not saying it's not a year, Brian, ninety six dollars a year. I don't ninety six dollars. I don't think that's, I don't think that's, I, I don't think that's a lot between the wealthy and the middle class, or even the wealthy and the lower class. Ninety six most lower class people ninety six dollars a year in the United States. If you really want to be on Twitter and you really want to have your voice heard, you can probably it's, it's still, pay ninety six dollars a year. If you're paying for internet and you can afford your internet, you can also afford ninety six dollars a year. I, for I, I don't Twitter. agree with that. Yeah, I I think that there's plenty of people below the poverty line that paying an extra eight dollars a month is gonna make their life worse. I, I, I don't I don't know if I agree with that. I, I think that I, I think that hundred dollars a year is not much. Ninety six dollars a year is not much. But to a lot of people, it it is something, and it's something that they could be forced not to pay based on their income. I don't know. I, I think I think you're making too much of a big deal out of this than there really is. He also said there's gonna be it's gonna be based on uh, purchasing power of parity. So if you're in a lower income country. Right. You're in a country where you right. know no, I, and, and it's going to be much more affordable. So, and I'm I'm not saying it's not a good idea for for him, but I I just I feel like it's not really free speech. You're you're, you're amplifying people who pay money. I I don't I don't if this is going to be like a town square environment where anybody can say what they want and and they can say it and have a have their voice heard. I don't think charging people is really the right way to go about it. Advertising is free speech. Advertising is viewed as free speech. So, yeah, no, I, it, it depends how you're looking at Twitter. If you're looking at Twitter as as a company that wants to make money and profit and and pay and I charge people, I don't people. think it's about that. I don't think it's about making money. I think it's about weeding out the bots and the spammers and the hate. And I think oh, it, this, it is it's a I, really good I, solution for that. I agree. I agree that that is a great idea in that respect. But I do think to some people it might be a little bit unfair. All right, fair point. Fair point. So let's move on to the DSO blockchain before Ed kills me on my birthday. So Clout Rocks, Clout Rocks, Brutes. The Brutes by Clout Rocks are now mintable. You can now go to cloutrocksbrute.com forward slash mint and mint your Clout Rocks. So far, over 80 of them have been minted. Brian and I minted one. I think it's like rarity number like 11 or something. It's a pretty cool one. Um, of course, this project is created by James Barrett and Ben McConnon, and the minting process is actually done with the help of Nathan Wells and his mint machine. Um, Millhouse Van Houten actually at this point has the rarest brute NFT. And you might recall we talked about these last week and earlier this week and said how there's over a quadrillion, I think 29, over 29 quadrillion different possibilities for generating these NFTs. So there's so many different possibilities out there. There's, I think, 50 different rules that are checked to have these minted. So great job by uh, Nathan Wells and his mint machine and great, great artwork by James Barrett and Ben McConn. And uh, I love these. And you can check out all of the Clout Rocks that have been minted, sort them by rarity, sort them by traits, et cetera. If you just go to cloutrocks.nftz.me and click on any Clout Rock and then click on the collection link and you'll be taken to the collection page. Yeah, I love these. Uh, great job, the entire team. The Social World, they're featuring yet another individual on DSO. Yesterday was Goldberry. Today it's Valerie C. And in this latest 
video that was released by the social world for their 50 videos from 50 different creators in 50 different countries they featured valerie uh, valerie c is from argentina but she's currently living in germany and she she talked about how she loves DSO, loves the community, especially loves the women women community on DSO, and she loves DSOFI. Let's uh, play the clip. Let, let's cut in and play the clip for you, Paul. Hello, how are you? My name is Valeria. I come from Argentina, uh, but uh, at the moment I live in Germany. I joined DSO a long time ago, let's say, um, when it, almost when it first started. I always enjoyed this. Uh, great community uh, of people and also I love the community of women um, and about the social world of course I I love that I can I can find spots in different languages like so remember you can apply to have your video featured here if your country has yet to be featured uh, and if you're chosen to be featured for your country you're gonna get ten dollars from the social world so definitely Partake in that if you can. Send your videos to the social world, and maybe we'll be talking about you on the show tomorrow or next week. Yeah, I, I love just getting to kind of meet these people on video, people that you wouldn't normally see uh, talking on video. You get to like learn about a lot of these DSO OGs from all over the world. Yeah, Valerie Sia, Valerie's Valor. Am I saying that right? Valeria Sia, ah, <laughs> Valeria C. <laughs> is a DSO OG and she's been amazing on the platform since the very start. Uh, but Story, uh, and the app by the Design Style Sisters and Rabal, they're giving away five diamonds to a random person who posts on their app today. So if you haven't yet posted on the Story app, definitely download that, make a post. It's a really fun platform and you have the chance to win five diamonds. Yeah, definitely check that out. Also, I want to point out DSO made a tweet yesterday and it's one that has me really excited they tweeted a decentralized verification system that costs you zero dollars is coming to DSO. stay tuned and of course this is playing off the fact that twitter is going to start charging people eight dollars a month to get verified which is completely and fair <laughs> depending on how you view it i guess but i think that DSO does has, have a solution and that is verification by association uh, i think that Doing so will not only make it free, and in, in some cases, people might charge for their verification badge. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work for sure. But I think that a decentralized system where a central entity is not the one who is verifying you is the way to go. And I, I think that it is a solution so that you don't have to put pressure on a central authority. And as we move towards the decentralized internet or Web3, I think that something like this, a decentralized verification system of a decentralized immutable identity will be the future. So DSO, I can't wait to see what you roll out. I know we've been waiting for a year for this. Yeah, and I think it is a better solution than Twitter, even though I feel like Twitter's solution is a good one. I feel DSO's solution for the decentralized association verification system has much more potential. And I think, I think we'll see a lot of interesting things be born from this. I think you know, people are going to be able to get verified by multiple entities. Multiple entities are going to be able to maybe even monetize themselves by handing out verifications. Um, what a wait and see. Maybe we'll do a verification system, Brian, and, and maybe maybe we'll charge seven ninety nine to get verified by the Krasenstein account. See, I bet you'd be okay with that, right? I don't know. I don't think I would be. No, but see, that's different because it's decentralized. You don't have to get a Krasenstein verification badge. You can go and get a Time yeah, verification but, but badge. And in all seriousness, be... Brian, who doesn't want a Krasenstein verification badge? That's true. But I, time, a Time verification badge would be just as just as sought after, I think. And he might charge nothing. No, see, with Krasenstein, you get two for the price of one. Yeah, but I don't know if you really count. Oh, okay. All right, so as many of you know, nftz.me is the only place where you can post and view live timed DSO NFT auctions. Uh, just go to nftz.me forward slash auctions and you can see all the auctions ending soon. I'm just going to highlight a few that are ending in the next 24 hours. There's a Sky Swaps, number 36, that ends today at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Really cool swap NFT if you haven't been familiar with them. Uh, great. DSO OG NFT collection. Uh, there's a Bulby number nine, which is a really cool Halloween themed Bulby. Uh, Bulbies 
our new NFT collection on DSO. They actually have several others ending today as well. Uh, and they all have a minimum bit of just 0.1 DSO, which is what, about $1.50 each. So if you want to get one of those, definitely check those out. They end at 5.30 p.m. or so Eastern time today. Uh, there's an Insurgent Frog and Mer Monster collaboration NFT. That's really cool. This one ends at 9 p.m. Eastern time. It already has a 5 DSO bid by a meta philosopher. So if you want to have a chance at outbidding the infamous, or I guess I should say famous, meta philosopher, you can do so before 9 p.m. Eastern time. And Arts, Art2Z has their first bunny cat NFT up for auction. These are really cool and has no minimum bid. Uh, I think I just bid on it. I bid like a low dollar amount just to get the party started, but that ends at 10 p.m. Eastern time, so check that out. Yeah, so I want to get to the top 10 bidders of NFTs on the DSO blockchain over the last 24 hours, according to NFTZ. They are as follows. CompDeck, Millhouse Van Houten, Meta Philosopher, Noel Garcia, Dead Metal, Ryan Elf, Sands 65, Zian Mead, It's Me, Tupac Shakur TV. If Tupac is alive, he might be suing you for using his name. Be careful. And uh, I, Gawurgi is what I want to say, but I think it's Gawurgi. Gawurgi. I know he corrected me once. Uh, so the top diamond creators over the last 24 hours, according to your friends at Alton Base, these people received the most diamonds or tips on their posts and replies on the DSO blockchain in the last day. Goldberry, number one, well-deserved, followed by ECOE, Miami, Japan, French Connector, Michelle Lord, Rihan Ri, Clout Women Unite, This Day in Music History, Lil Lover, and Sean Slater, who I think we're going to have on our show on Monday. Yeah, and you see, if you become an unofficial intern of the Krasenstein show, you become the top diamond creator on DSO. I don't think there's any... I don't think there's Goldberry any. doesn't deserve any credit. It's all, it's all about becoming our intern. Eddie turns 41 and he gets really cocky. No, I'm kidding. Goldberry deserves all the credit. Anyhow, so the events that are taking place today, we're going to start doing this a little differently because I feel like tagging all the people that are partaking in the events every day and reading through the list is kind of a waste of time when we can just kind of Thank Miss Katie Ann for providing the list and then just showing that list at the end of their, our videos. So everybody have a great rest of your day. Um, eat some cake for us, some birthday cake if you can, and check out this list of today's events. Thanks to Miss Katie Ann.